If you're here because your 96 to 2002 ish uh, Nissan Serena or Vanette Cargo is having intermittent uh, no start conditions, uh, i.e., it sometimes doesn't start, and the red LED on the dash is just telling you, nope, not going to go, uh, this video is for you. So uh, I've done uh, fixed this uh, by modifying the uh, starter inhibitor box. Uh, it is uh, located uh, underneath the glove box and it sits right up here uh, with a little clip which is almost impossible to get out. I use pure force. So this is how the starter inhibitor box looks uh, in mine. And uh, Siemens branded vehicle immobilizer. So I've taken these PCB out, I've probed around a bit uh, and what I have done is uh, connect the two upper pins on the right hand side together and that's it. Ignore anything else that looks weird there. Those two upper left, upper right pins, those two should be connected together. You cut the outer one and solder it to the leftmost one uh, or you uh, do it with the wires. In that case you want to cut the green wire and uh, uh, connect the white and green wire to the green wire so that the green wire coming from the car is simply disconnected entirely. Uh, the green wire is the 24-7 uh, 12 volt feed, the white and green wire is the switched 12 volt feed and this will cause the box to reset every time you start the vehicle and the box will not receive power when the vehicle is off. Uh, I've uh, done a bit of a schematic, you can pause the video if you want to see. So the pins we want to be dealing with are uh, these two, so this is viewing the box from the S end, label side towards us like so. And uh, uh, the two pins, this is the 24 7 12 volt, this is the switch 12 volt, and that's about it. Pause the video if you want to see more of that. Now on to the actual video. Summer has arrived, it's a lovely 17 degrees outside and that means I've finally got a chance to tackle a van, a van issue which has been bothering me for a rather long time and that would be this electronic box. So this is uh, the NET box uh, which uh, stands for a Nissan anti-theft system and it is lovely labeled Cont unit immobilizer uh, which is uh, acting up and this uh, will occasionally cause a vehicle to not start up uh, depending on the weather and uh, the general mood of the box and uh, frankly I don't think anybody's out to steal my 17, 18 year old van so I just want to get rid of this thing so I can start it with a screwdriver if I so wish, wish to. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is uh, going through, I'm basically going to uh, take a bit of a brute force tactic to this. Uh, uh, the unit works by uh, having a resonant coil 125 kilohertz which is dampened by the key when you put it in so there's no actual chip in the key and I think this thing controls the fuel cutoff solenoid directly uh, so uh, what I'm gonna do is just to uh, measure all the pins on the connector uh, when the vehicle is uh, off with the key removed and uh, then measure them again with the key inserted and turned on and the box in good working order and I'll try to just replicate the turned on position by just hard wiring this connector. Uh, there's probably some trickery to it so you can't just figure it out and cross a couple of wires. Uh, it might be like a logic level 8 bit or something but uh, there isn't really any computer box uh, responsible for turning the engine on and off so uh, I'm hoping it's going to be rather simple uh, procedure. Uh, but yeah, I'm just gonna measure the uh, plug and I'll be back in a sec. Well, this is a bit disconcerting. I was mucking about with a box and then was touching it a bit and what seemed to be a stable 5-ish volt output turned into data. And there's uh, a lot of data. I got the box into the motor which will refuse to start. Uh, we have got the red LED on the dash bar and the vehicle will crank but not start and the box is constantly chugging out this data which is weird, I'm not sure what box would 
be eaten that data, but uh, surely there is some other computery type box in this thing which uh, uh, is uh, taking it. Now the question is, how do we deal with this? I'm not sure what the best approach is. If a box doesn't seem to be putting a data when, the, when it's uh, not in the angry mode, we will refuse to start. So perhaps just putting a big cap over this out, but to prevent it from putting that data out would be enough to get it working. I'll have to keep tinkering with it. Uh, the more I dig, the, the less fun this seems to be. So I've done some more research uh, while the vehicle is uh, has the box connected and uh, the power on. And we've got two data pins here in each corner and uh, you cannot disconnect either of those without causing a no start condition. Uh, which wouldn't be a big issue for this one since it only puts out data when the box is angry, seemingly. Uh, but this one's constantly putting out data when the key is in and the power is on. So... To get around that, uh, I'd either have to uh, find some way to activate the fuel cut of solenoid uh, further down the line, uh, which uh, wouldn't really solve the issue, and it would be a lot of work since uh, all the other electronics are rather hard, uh, hard to find and uh, dug well inside dashes and other pieces of the interior. Uh, so I'm thinking. Uh, to go a bit of a dirty route on this and see how it turns out. Because uh, I have this, this ancient uh, low quality video on the internet uh, where someone else was dealing with this, this issue quite a few years ago and uh, he did the dirty thing which is, should solve the issue for the time being anyway and that is to uh, disconnect the uh, 24 7 12 volt power supply for this thing and put that to the switched 12 volt which is available in the plug itself uh, making the entire box uh, dead when the key isn't in and in the on position uh, because when you get the no start condition with this uh, you can usually fix it by disconnecting the battery for a sec or disconnecting this box for a little while so having this box uh, disconnected and unpowered while the vehicle isn't running uh, should solve the issue. Uh, so that would probably entail connecting that, let's see, that pin to that pin and disconnecting that. And because this seems to be a switch 12 volt input since it's there uh, when the box isn't in and it isn't there when the power isn't on. So that's a switch 12 volts, that's a 24 7 12 volt. Cut that bridge first, yeah, that should be good to go. Ah, you can see my beautiful handwork. Uh, ignore the solder blob on that uh, lower pin. It's uh, these two guys. I've cut the uh, always on power and just to, to lean the pin over there and solder blob it to the switched power. So uh, in theory, if I'm correct, uh, this box should now be unpowered as soon as the ignition is off and uh, it should boot up and work every time when you turn the vehicle on, so let's give it a go. Alright, so first sign of change uh, is that we no longer have the blinking red LED we used to have when the key wasn't in the ignition, so let's see if it'll actually power on. That's it, that's rather excellent. Now I wonder if it's still going to be susceptible to uh, going insane when I fiddle it. Uh, when I fiddle the, this around while troubleshooting, I noticed that the red LED would uh, sporadically turn on and never go out again. So this should definitely cause some major issues. Well, it hasn't come on. Well, that's nice. I have had for the longest time an issue where the rev LED would randomly turn on while driving and of course that's very annoying when you, you've got the red LED right in front of you which is also reflecting the windshield so the fact is also going away with this I'm not complaining if it doesn't I'm just going to cut the LED out because fuck that uh, so now I just want to try and fiddle this thing 
until it actually uh, acts up and gives me the red LED and no start condition and see uh, if just cycling the key uh, is going to resolve it because uh, that is the theory. Alright, I've fiddled myself a red LED so uh, we should now have a no start condition. Okay. That's the first time this has ever powered on with a red LED. Huh. Weird. Either way, in times a red LED went away when I just turned it off. Okay. That's that's surprising. Uh, perhaps yeah, actually perhaps the uh, switch 12 volt for the box is actually on the on position rather than the ACK position. That would make sense. So we'll probably power cycle the box when we just turn the engine off there and now we're turning it back on. And indeed, the red LD has gone away. Let's repeat that a few times, make sure the fear is sound and uh, perhaps this vehicle is going to be good to go. Alright, uh, I've been playing around more. Uh, a couple of things to note. Uh, one, the red LED seems to come on every time uh, the key has been inserted and in the on position for a while. However, uh, the vehicle will still start with a red LED turn, turned on and turn the vehicle off and back on will uh, turn the red LED off for a while. It'll then turn on again every single time it seems. So that is a bit of an odd behaviour. I'm going to have to cut that LED out because it's annoying as hell. Uh, but the vehicle seems to be starting very reliably. I haven't had a start failure uh, yet, uh, even though the red LED has been on. So mm. <laughs> I think I'm going to go with that. Okay, it's back on. Works like a charm every time. Alright, I've been digging away around the vehicle trying to find which uh, magic box the LED of the dash is actually connected to and I haven't been successful. So, uh, for this repair I'm just going to disconnect the LED entirely. I do not need it. I'm just going to assume the box is working and if it isn't I can just cycle the key. So now I'm going to put this back together and this vehicle's going to be good to go. Hopefully. There we go. Everything back together. So. Let's see if it'll still start. Like a dream. And we're not going to have any annoying red LED. We're not going to have any more starting issues. And I'm going to feel somewhat confident driving this thing again. So, uh, thank you for watching. Cheerio.